What is the unknown? Did you know that Amazon Prime recently started hosting AI-generated documentaries? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ultimate documentary on the Twilight Saga. Ha ha, AI bad. Let me be absolutely clear on something. I, I was recommended this, but it was my mum's Prime account. I don't even watch documentaries. For me, arguably the worst part of this is that they had the gall to open this AI-generated Twilight documentary with a notice leaning into the fact that, that they know it's a, a trash AI product. Like, they couldn't even grant me a lack of self-awareness. They, they had to turn around and be like, Oh, actually, we know it's bad. Ha ha, goofy, f funny, ha silly parody. Ha -ha, silly, uh, fun parody. We know, we know it's bad. It's not a silly, fun parody. It's the end of the world. Released on Amazon Prime late last year, Eternally Twilight, an AI's guide to the Twilight Saga, is an hour-long robot documentary that you can purchase for $5, or here in the UK, £8 which is $10. So throw on some blue eyeshadow and get ready to howl at the moon. Now I've said this before, but quality is subjective, dependent on the tastes and preferences of each individual audience. People talk about things like The Room or the Bob Hoskins Mario movie, and they say, I enjoy this, but only in an ironic way. And I don't think that's strictly true. I think on some level, you do just like it. It has an appeal to you, and usually the distinction is more that the things that you like about it, you don't really think were deliberate. At the end of the day, artists don't get to dictate how you appreciate something. You enjoy the thing, and that's something personal to you. Maybe you don't even enjoy it, but pain and pleasure have become indistinguishable to you, and in that case, may the Mighty One have mercy on your soul. Tim and Eric. Xavier Renegade Angel, Tales Gets Trolled, time and again artists have learned lessons from ironically enjoyable entertainment to create absolute masterpieces. This isn't the Triforce of Wisdom, but it's something. I don't think this is that. Bella is a shy, awkward high school student who moves to the rainy town of Forks, Washington and falls in love with the mysterious and brooding Edward Cullen. This, to me, is worthless. Clearly there was a last ditch attempt to reframe this as some kind of satire, but I don't think this is even ironically fun beyond maybe the first 10 seconds. You laugh for a minute about some of the mangled AI art or the mangled AI script, uh, and then that's it, and there's another 59 minutes of the same AI art while a monotone AI voice reads out the Wikipedia summary of Twilight, repeating itself five or six times over as it slowly reaches the limits of its search results. Did you know that Twilight was criticized for its depiction of unhealthy relationship dynamics? The relationship between Bella and Edward has been criticized for its lack of healthy communication and the way it idealizes an unhealthy relationship dynamic. The romance in the Twilight Saga has been criticized for its unhealthy aspects. This portrayal has been criticized for its harmful message about abusive relationships. Some critics have argued that the series the relationship promotes unhealthy between Bella and Edward series has, has also been, been criticized, criticized for, its for its unhealthy aspects. aspects. Did you know that Twilight had merchandise? Would you like to hear that five fucking times in a row? And you know because it's AI that if it even comes close to an interesting point, that's because it's ripping directly from an actual human writer who came up with the thoughts. The AI didn't have the thoughts. Robots don't have thoughts. I'm robot racist. I don't trust the robots. Daft Punk were the last good ones. People have criticized my videos in the past for being monotone and repetitive, so that's why I'm trying a lot of different voices in this video. That's why I'm trying a lot of different voices in this video. Wait, you've been messing with my bees. Stay away from my bees. Also, uh, that squall. Why are all of the Edwards squall? The Twilight fandom has inspired a wide range of artistic styles and has led to the creation of some truly beautiful works of art. This film was distributed by Film Hub, a service that allows independent artists to put their work out on various streaming platforms at low or no cost with basically no studio filter. So, in a way, this is democracy. 
Film Hub is not something I was hugely familiar with, and it does seem to serve an obvious need, though I have also seen some artists claim they were not fairly compensated for work distributed through them, so your mileage may vary. It does have a loose content policy that Eternally Twilight seems to barely qualify for, uh, but I'm not a cop. There is, however, also a policy against spreading conspiracy theories, which I guess is the reason the other AI-generated documentaries produced by this YouTube channel were not released on the platform. That's right, I, I found the channel, despite the fact that the credits on the Amazon Prime page list the standard, I'm too embarrassed to put my name on this credit, uh, it, you can just go there and find the, the Twilight documentary for free if, if you if you feel like watching that. You can also check out one of their many multi-part series on occult knowledge and the reptilian agenda. Reptilian lore proposes their hand in wars and conflicts, technological leaps, even in global policymaking. Which, for some reason, don't have the uh, haha is an AI silly disclaimer at the start which I guess means that these ones are meant to be taken at face value. Some argue that many of our political leaders, our captains of industry and our celebrated figures are either reptilian in disguise or under their hypnotic sway, their true purpose hidden beneath layers of power and influence. I'm not part of the reptilian agenda community, so while I, I would get the impression that if that's something that really mattered to you, you would care enough to kind of put in your own words rather than just asking an AI to make this garbled version of it, uh, maybe the important thing is just getting the word out. From the looks of things, this is still a pretty obscure channel that mostly just exists to funnel attention to an indie studio that does write and produce their own original work. Uh, I know the grind. I do think it's slimy to use AI to peddle this stuff if it is just for engagement. I do think you should also stop trying to profit off of the work ripped by AI art generators by attempting to sell merchandise of your YouTube thumbnails. But this is where I kind of petered out. This is the second time now on my channel that a random media experience has led me to likely AI-generated online deep state conspiracy theories. They are brainwashing the youngest among us, and they are doing this on the orders of the Chinese government. China. But in the case of Moon, that was a fairly influential channel with over a million subscribers, not this. Everything you've heard so far is a script I was working on, digging into this particular rabbit hole, and th this is pretty much where that rabbit hole ended. Frankly, I, I don't want to become a channel that just makes whole videos calling out random, obscure creators. I find your theories problematic, and I do not subscribe to them. Uh, but I wish you all the best. Also, who even cares about Twilight anymore? It's not like some big channel's gonna come along and make some big three hour long video starting up the discourse about it again. Like, like move on, you know? So I told myself I'd just shelve this for now and if I found a good link on the topic of conspiracy or misleading AI, maybe I'd revisit it again. A day later, there was a Willy Wonka event in Glasgow. You might be asking, wow Jack, that's so unfair that you have to pay those extra five dollars to enjoy the AI Twilight documentary on UK Amazon. Well, it just so happens I have a tool to solve just that problem. Today's sponsor, Surfshark. I will give you $1,000 if you still do not know what a VPN is. A tool that helps you preserve your online privacy around the globe and unlock media from all over the world. I can access 15 different Netflix libraries, limited streaming services like iPlayer and Hulu. I can watch the bear now. And when I travel, I can encrypt my data and feel that bit safer on public Wi-Fi. Surfshark maintains a strict no logs policy that helps you feel secure as you travel the webways. There are apps for all platforms, PC, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, Smart TVs, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and best of all, you get a 30 day money back guarantee if you decide to head down to my description and try out Surfshark today with the promo code on screen now. Go to surfshark.deal slash jacksaint to access one of the most affordable and reliable VPNs today. Once again, that's surfshark.deal slash jacksaint. Thank you. Have you heard about the Glasgow Willy Wonka experience? I can't stop thinking about the Glasgow Willy Wonka experience. Ha ha, AI bad. So the basic gist is that since around early December of last year, an event planning company had been hyping up what they called 
Willie's Chocolate Experience. An enchanting world where dreams come to life, this full immersive experience is designed for families and children, promising a day of pure imagination and wonder. Tickets were 35 British pounds, which is 45 American dollars, with AI generated images and text presented by the company to give a vague impression of the spectacle that awaited attendees. An Imac Nation Lab, and pretty Upzeptic Twits, Enchenering Entertainment. Uh, in the end, the event was actually like this. We got in, there was maybe 20 chairs, something like that. A few tables, a half-inflated bouncy castle. It was that bad, it was, it was funny. And my boys were, they walked in and they were just like, what the, what is this? Oh look, it's a chocolate river. The company's name? House of Illuminati, the reptiles strike again. Sobek, the crocodile god. Celebrity news, celebrity news. Set in a scenic venue in an industrial area of Glasgow, advertised features included visual wonders at every turn, the whimsical performances of the iconic Oompa Loompas, and sweet delicacies and chocolatey wonders, which in this case took the form of a quarter can of lemonade and a single jelly bean per child. Now given the fact that the event itself was advertised with misleading AI, images, can we also assume that the blog posts advertising the event were written up by an AI text generator? Yes. Performers were also given up to 15 pages of gibberish AI script leading to my absolute favourite part of this entire event, the villain of the show. Yes! What is that? It's the end of the Unknown. There is a man, we don't know his name. We know him as the Unknown. This Unknown is an evil chocolate maker who lives in the walls. A human being had to say this to children. I do actually have the script that the actors were given. Ah, Willie Macduff and his band of intrepid explorers. You have something I desire, and with your unwitting aid, it shall be mine. The anti-graffiti gobstopper will no longer clean your worlds. It will turn them to chaos at my command. A technology intended to benefit people being used to cause pain and misery. What an interesting concept. This event was an obvious travesty that wasted a lot of people's time and may have traumatized multiple children. It really can't be overstated how hard the performers involved tried to salvage this thing even when the guy who ran it explicitly tried to disrupt them doing so. We generally did feel so bad for the kids and the parents and that's why we stayed. We stayed because we felt bad. Kirsty Patterson and Paul Connell and all of the people that tried to handle this disaster deserve every credit and also money. I regret to inform that the Glasgow Willy Wonka is a groomer. Crowds of enraged Glaswegians were summoned. Why just hire bouncers? Because you knew we were all going to kick off. No, I'm going to call the police. So the house of Illuminati guarantees. The house of Illuminati tells lies. No. The police were called, all future dates for the event were cancelled. Even now House of Illuminati director Billy Cole is fighting in the Facebook minefields, apologising and making sure everyone knows that Richard Bone played no part in this. Which is exactly what Richard Bone would want him to say. At the time of making this video, many refunds are still pending and many outlets are still desperately trying to turn this meme story into something with a coherent message to take away from it. Uh, it's me, I'm Outlets. Most of them have landed on the misleading AI element of this story. Cole himself has tried to argue that a lot of things fell through at the last minute that would have brought the event closer to the expectations set by the AI, uh, including a delay in postage that meant they could not receive a special holographic paper. What kind of magic paper was this, Billy? And why was it not worth paying for the next day delivery? It seems abundantly clear that there was no way this event was ever going to remotely match the AI-generated images or AI-generated description, and frankly, it was a bit of an enigmatic Vivu standard to me. But things go deeper than that. See, the story of Billy Cole seems like one we've seen many times before, particularly with the recent popularity of AI generative technology. A man so in over his head that you can't help feel he is 
surely aware of how deluded he is when it comes to this tech. Much like some other popular YouTubers that have already been covered on the channel and I'm far too gracious to bring up again. I'm sorry, I can't help it. Shad, what are you doing? What's going on? Shad, Shad, I don't think you're as good an artist as your brother, Shad. strengths and weaknesses and you know what my strengths are in artistry. I'm at a professional theater and you know that. Please, 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 Shad. There's still time to accept the duel. Freaking asshole. I am an artist. He thinks he is better than me. It's easy to write off Billy Cole's use of AI as just a man stumbling across a website while trying to put out fluff for his blog. It's not even the only deceptive tactic he used to advertise the event. You can go to his blog and plainly see images that he just ripped from Google image search results. Here's a YouTube channel he just ripped a low res thumbnail from. But Billy's ties to AI actually go much deeper. In fact, Billy has used AI tools to produce and self-publish over 17 books available on Amazon. That's right, we're back here. His works include Echoes of Illumination, a 300-page novel about a historian uncovering cryptic messages left by a mysterious group in the heart of the Vatican. You might think this sounds somewhat like The Da Vinci Code, which is interesting because one of the main character's names is Robert Langdon, who is the main character of The Da Vinci Code. Would you believe if I said that Billy Cole publicly cites Dan Brown as an influence? Possibly because he told the AI to generate a novel based on the Dan Brown novel The Da Vinci Code, and then didn't bother to check that the AI put a character from The Da Vinci Code in the book. His other works include The Hidden Bible. Set against a backdrop of enigmatic symbols and echoes of antiquity, Emily's exploration takes her on a quest that transcends the constraints of history. Guided by the hidden verses, she traverses the landscapes of spirituality, science, and philosophy, uncovering a legacy that could reshape the very foundations of our understanding. The Prophecy Matrix. Guided by prophecies, Amelia finds herself entangled with a secret society known as the Order of Chronicles. Dedicated to preserving his historical knowledge, the Order becomes her ally in deciphering the prophecies and thwarting a group determined to manipulate the future for nefarious ends. Billy also uses AI to generate conspiracy theories. That's right, we're back here! Operation Inoculation, unveiling the A conspiratorial journey into vaccination truths deep state conspiracy. We have reached unfathomable horrors. Operation Inoculation invites you to confront your own beliefs, question the narratives that surround you, and ultimately consider the power of truth in an ever-changing world. They feed us poison, so we buy their medicine while they suppress- Hang on. At the end of the day, I am bad at making videos quickly, and there's a good chance that by the time I put this out, everyone will already be very much sick of talking about Willie's chocolate experience. Maybe I'm on Monday, let's, let's call that the cut off. So what's the point? There's already been some fair takeaways from this situation. You could wrap it all up in the neat bow of AI's false promises. People were sold an exciting prospect and instead they got a Simpsons reference. Much like with the advent of NFTs, what we're often seeing is laymen who barely even understand the technology rushing in to exploit people even more gullible than them in the hopes of a quick bug. This is the consequences of that behavior reaching oxygen. So I'm getting used to actually being able to have like distance from the camera. Uh, so the duck's been out of the shot. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Ideally, it's a warning that if you see any business openly using AI art or writing as advertising, uh, there's a fair chance you're being sold a cheap scam and should probably back away slowly. I think you should also consider who the people really are that are hiding behind this technology, who are either willfully malicious in their use of it, or just indifferent to any ethical concerns beyond what might make them money. Two dollars, 30 trial, financially free. How good's that sound? Again, kind of like NFTs. But this is where I keep feeling like I'm gonna alienate some of my audience because I really can't help feeling like NFTs and AI are not really the same, in part because NFTs have already crashed and burned, and if they do come back, they'll be in a very different form. Going back to Simpsons references, uh, I don't think that AI is the monorail episode. I don't even think it's the mascot treehouse of horror episode. 
think AI is here to stay. We've been seeing stories like this pop up more and more as companies have been recklessly using AI to produce and market lazily made products and services. We could be talking about an obscure wedding planning company, or we could be talking about Disney, who have already started integrating AI into their media. You can't tell me AI didn't play a role in Wish. It's easy to focus down on people like Billy Cole, a person who fundamentally has fairly limited power and will very likely live with the consequences of his decision for some time. A man with financial needs who did a ridiculous thing. I've never hosted a fake Willy Wonka event, but I've certainly done stupid things for money. It's easy for me as a media critic to see the onslaught of absolute trash AI products and poke fun at it. Hello, my name is Princess Jane. I would like to show you some tricks. I hope you enjoy it. Even as it slowly becomes more refined over time. But I think sometimes that can be a way to ignore a deeper existential dread surrounding this whole conversation. Sometimes I feel like when I'm looking at all of this, I'm not looking uh, like a Wonka-like reckless creative abandon. Sometimes I feel like what I'm really looking at is the unknown. You know the unknown. Automation is not a new thing. Human labor being replaced with new machine tools is an integral part of human history. You could even argue that the tools themselves, as an expression of us, are a part of humanity. Is there really even a difference between a world of human and robot workers. Right now, yes, pretty clearly, as massive layoffs in a range of industries are leaving thousands of families at massive financial risk, forced to retrain in areas they may still be replaced in for the sake of corporate trends. This is the reservation I've always had about AI art, something I expressed in my last video on the subject, which the robots told me performed very badly, and I should have done a video instead about Nightmare Before Christmas theory. See, the most important thing for me, is that the people making my art uh, can survive. Uh, and a piece of technology that allows you to essentially step over them to get to the art that they make uh, seems pretty unavoidably terrible. Discover the talented illustrator Sarah Anderson. Welcome to a digital realm where art meets advanced technology and the barriers to entry have been completely dissolved. You know the take. AI art and writing relies on the theft of labor from artists and writers, almost universally without their consent, all for the sake of replacing them with trash reproductions of their own work. To that end, the media hot take is absolutely correct. Willy's Chocolate Experience is a perfect metaphor for the false promises of AI. The Glasgow Oompa Loompa and a screen cap of a broken customer service chatbot may as well be one and the same, and as more technology illiterate companies embrace AI, whole industries will be constantly experiencing their own enchaining moment. Maybe there is just a selfish part of me that fears a world where I too am replaced like so many other professions. It's important to engage in critical analysis of media and to recognize the ways in which even beloved works of fiction can perpetuate harmful stereotypes and messages. Maybe in Eternally Twilight, I'm just seeing a kind of dark, sinister reflection, like a, like a black mirror. This is like an episode of Black Mirror. There once was a time when it seemed like certain industries would always be safe from automation. But I can't see that anymore. Lawyers are now being replaced with AI. But again, this is not a new thing. Billy Cole didn't need AI to fool people about this event. YouTubers don't need robots to do bad plagiarism. Companies don't need AI to cut costs by replacing human workers with garbage automation. Not long after I arrived in the UK, a 2000s post office scandal became a massive talking point after a show on the subject became popular. Essentially, the company Fujitsu, which managed accounts of sub postmasters, used faulty software that created false debts sending thousands of completely innocent people into financial ruin. Over 900 sub-postmasters were falsely accused of stealing from their own communities, convicted of various crimes, leading to many broken families and at least four suicides. All of this because of shit technology poorly implemented with no human consideration. 
Ha ha, AI bad. For something that seems so simple, something that seems so obviously laughable, I have a lot of thoughts. I really don't want to come across like a doomer who thinks we're inevitably falling into dystopia where everything's slop and reality can't even be trusted anymore. I also don't want to act like I just want to return to Monk, like I can't see the benefits of this future that we seem to be sliding into. This is also something I wrestled with in that last video. Quality is subjective. Knowledge Husk brought out a recent video where he pointed out how surprisingly quickly AI art generation is reaching the point of basic acceptability. It's showing an understanding of physics and cause and effect. Things that would normally require a game engine, but it's just doing it with visual data. It seems to suggest that the potential of this technology is a little, little bit more than a lot of us gave it credits. I'm not saying it's going to replace anybody's jobs right now. You shouldn't panic. Don't go out there into the streets. Don't smash your Roombas. Not stealing your job just yet, but it will. It's arriving and we still have time to point and laugh at it all. But we do still live in an economic system built on cost efficiency over humanity. And that leaves a lot of the people this technology is feeding off of in danger. Some people have argued that AI is just the end result of how human culture has always worked. The individual always being dissolved into the collective as we amalgamate the experiences around us. I don't think art is just the result of these great minds springing out of nowhere and producing these great things out of nothing. Everything comes from some material condition. Do you, you think, think you, you just, just fell out of a coconut, coconut tree? tree? <laughs> but as long as there is repetition, there is difference. New things happen, life occurs. And as this new thing happens, I hope there's a part of our monkey collective that can look past the easy jokes and truly be ready to face the unknown. And stay away from my bees. I wanted to give all sides a fair shake as I round out this conversation, so I brought my dog as a representative of the animal kingdom. Uh, and I've also asked uh, ChatGPT to give their own explanation for the benefits they have to society. As a tool developed by OpenAI, I can offer several benefits to society. Information retrieval and synthesis, educational assistance, language translation, creative writing support, problem solving, accessibility, entertainment, productivity, innovative applications, continuous learning and improvement. It's important to note that while I offer these benefits, ethical use and consideration of potential limitations are crucial aspects of integrating AI technologies into society. Sherlock? Sherlock? Sh Sherlock? Okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching my video. If you like it, please consider sending me a tip using the links below or signing up for my Patreon where I put out regular updates on new projects. You could also be one of the names scrolling by now. I'm sorry if this topic is already dead by the time I got to it. There are several new videos in the works, but I did want to get this one out for obvious reasons. Like, subscribe, share the video so it isn't a disaster like the last one. Uh, leave a comment, maybe I'll do a follow-up video. Uh, mysterious tease for elemental critique. Oh wait, hang on, that part was in brackets. Repeating itself about five t Repeating itself about five or six times over. Repeating itself about five or six times over. Repeat- Repeating itself The power of evil will always be overthrown by the power of good.